Welcome to Boys Choir Today, the podcast brought to you by the St. John's Boys Choir in Collegeville, Minnesota. I'm your host, the Artistic Director of the St. John's Boys Choir, Paul John Rudoy, and I'm joined today on Episode 2 by Caden Rothstein. Well, Caden, thank you so much for being here, and thanks for being a part of the second episode of this podcast. I really appreciate you taking the time. No problem. So I know your name, but many people might not know if they're listening to this. So can you introduce yourself, what grade you're in, and how long you've been a part of the St. John's Boys Choir? Okay, I'm Caden Rothstein, 13 years old. I just started seventh grade, and I think I've been up for Boys Choir for about three years. So what's it been like over the past three years? Have you kind of transformed as a musician or as a person, or do you feel very comfortable in that space? I feel very comfortable in the space. I think I've definitely learned better music and I've definitely gotten, I think, better. That's awesome. Do you have a favorite piece that uh, you sang maybe this past year? Um, I like, I don't really have a favorite piece. All the pieces are really different and they're, some of them are really good and some of them don't spark my interest so I don't really have a favorite no (laughs) I appreciate that that's very diplomatic and some don't spark my interest there have definitely been songs that I'm like I would be fine with never singing that again (laughs) (laughs) okay so let's start out just getting to know you a little bit do you have a favorite video game or book or album and Uh, why uh I would pick Harry Potter it's a really fun series to read they have movies for it too but I think the books are still the best in my opinion. I love them so much. And I actually mentioned this, it's funny. I believe it was Quinn who said that was also his favorite series. And I brought up the fact that when it first came out, I was 10 years old. I was the same age as Harry when it came out. It's pretty incredible. Do you play video games at all? No. No, good, good for you. You're smarter than most of us. What kind of music do you listen to? I kind of like, like, when new songs come out, there's always, like, a bunch of random picks that I really like, but not really any really genre. Yeah. I have to say, lately, I have been into this genre called lo-fi hip-hop. You ever heard of that? Not really. <laughs> okay. So, I listen to hip-hop off and on. I really appreciate it for what it is, and it's it's just a phenomenal genre that's pretty undersung by most people. But there's this really cool genre called lo-fi hip-hop which is basically exactly what it sounds like it's it's hip-hop beats but very lo-fi very sparkly sounds and kitchen sink sounds that sort of thing and most songs only last a minute and a half or two minutes which is really great so it's really good to study with hi everyone My name is Paul John Rudoy, and I am the producer of the Boys Choir Today podcast, as well as the artistic director of the St. John's Boys Choir. Just a moment to thank the musicians Super Sample, Ryle, Tayro, and Raffengraff, who posted their various loops on Looperman, loops which I use to compose the lo-fi track you're listening to right now. Stay tuned into the second half of this podcast for more conversation with Caden Rothstein, as well as our short song break, Every episode of Boys Choir Today offers not just new music and interviews, but a short song that we learn together, which you all can sing safely in your homes with your friends and family around the dinner table or wherever you feel most comfortable. Keep an eye out for more episodes at boyschoirtoday.buzzsprout.com so you can learn more songs to pass along. While this podcast was created primarily for the St. John's Boys Choir community to stay in touch during this time, It's also freely available to the public. So if you liked what you heard today and want to contribute, please visit sjbchoir.org to donate or find more information about the St. John's Boys Choir, this podcast, and more. So if you could be a superhero that hasn't been created yet, Hmm. do you have an idea of what that would be? I kind of do. I think it would be somewhere along electricity and evaporation, like matter transportation and lightning and stuff like that. Do you like physics? Uh, Kind of, yes. Yeah. My partner, Brittany, and I have been playing Zelda Breath of the Wild a lot. Mm -hmm. And what was really cool about it is that it's really built on nature. Yeah. That means that when you have, you know, metal weapons or whatever, and you're in a storm, you should probably put those away because chances yep. mm-hmm. get hit with electricity. 
Yeah. So, okay. So going back to the St. John's Boys Choir, mm -hmm. um, you really like it. You've been there for three years. Are there things about the St. John's Boys Choir besides singing that you enjoy and why? It could be camp week or it could be touring, yeah. it could be anything. I do like touring a lot. I'm always excited to go to new places. I'm kind of bummed that we didn't get to go to British Columbia though. Yeah. But I can't wait for Germany. That would be fun. Oh man, that's going to be a blast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love that. That was my, that was one of my favorite parts of being in the boys choir as well. Because I found, I found that it was such a unique experience. Something that you can't really get anywhere else. And you're forced to figure out how to deal with each other. And a lot of the normal day-to-day -day stuff that we do, you are not stuck with people on a bus or on a plane for hours. So you kind of just have to accept it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a particular thing that you like to study when you're in the boys' choir? Do you like piano or theory? Because because besides just singing, there are also there's rotation that we can do as well. Yeah. Um, I don't really get into piano that much. I kind of like theory though, because it's always fun to do like little games with learning and stuff. It's probably my favorite. Theory. Yeah, theory is great, and I also like that it's kind of formulaic. It's a little math focused, which is yep. really nice. Mm -hmm. If you could go back and there was one song that you could sing right now, right? Since we can't sing and we haven't sung for a while. Maybe not a favorite song, but like a song that was just so exciting or cool and unique. Yes, you know? I liked in Boys Choir, we did, it was called Fire by Elements. A lot of like the body movements too. It was- Oh yeah. I've wanted to do that for a long time and haven't had a chance. So maybe we'll bring that back sometime soon. Yes. That's awesome. Okay, so here comes a time when you can ask me some questions. For those of you who are listening to this, you know, I'm still new on the job and Caden and the rest of the boys don't know me yet. And so this is a really interesting way to get to know each other, even though we can't sing together right now. So yeah. do you have any questions for me? Um, one that I really want to know is what is your small combination? Like if My s'more combination? Yeah. Okay, so here's a, a very important question. Yeah. Are you a person who requires all three components of the s'mores? Yes. Okay, so I'm probably going to be a little weird. I do not like the flavor of burnt marshmallow. Neither do I really that much. Not like burnt. Yeah, for me, it's the texture of it melted. If anything, I have just a plain old marshmallow and then chocolate and then graham, open face. But if I don't have the marshmallow, then it's just graham and two layers of chocolate. If there's not gonna be any marshmallow, I might as well capitalize on yeah. the size of that, right? Without the marshmallow. Yeah. Um, do you have any hobbies outside of SJBC? You know, it's a great question because like many 21st century musicians, I do a lot of different things. So St. John's Boys Choir is my primary thing now, but I also compose pretty regularly. That's basically my part-time job before this. And then my other part-time job was professionally singing. So I would sing with professional choruses around the country, like Seraphic Fire and Conspirari and that sort of thing, and the Santa Fe Desert Chorale. And these are, this is really interesting. Maybe in five, 10 years, this might be something that would interest you, but you can do a contract where uh, you'll audition for one of these choirs. And then if you get accepted, then they basically give you a contract for a week where you show up with your music learned, you rehearse three to five rehearsals, and then you do five to seven performances all in the span of a week. And then you go back home and everything's paid for. That's it's cool. really, it's really weird. And it's new. I, that really didn't happen 30, 40 years ago. So if you're interested in being a professional musician, Caden, you can do that. <laughs> Maybe eventually. <laughs> you got a little bit of time. I think that's fair. Yeah, a little bit. Oh yeah, I never asked you. What's your s'more combination? Um, I'm just a plain old s'more chocolate and and um, graham cracker. I don't really like care for Reese's or anything on it that much. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's that's a classy way to go. <laughs> okay, so do you have a favorite ice cream or pizza? Um, I like chicken Alfredo pizza. Chicken Alfredo. Yeah. 
Well, okay, so here's the thing. Quinn and I were talking about this. Uh, Quinn likes buffalo chicken. Ooh, I've had that before. That's pretty good. And I had also not, I'd heard of that, but I had never had it. But I like buffalo chicken, you know, on my wings, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'll have to try it. But chicken Alfredo is really good because, again, I like that, you know, not on a pizza, just as a dish. That's really tasty. What's your favorite cereal? Um, that's a tough one too. I got into Apple Jacks for a while. Okay. But now, yeah, I'd still have to say I, um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is probably right now. We're going to get along real well. Yes. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is my favorite. Absolutely. I will say though, that I liked the flavor of Honey Nut Cheerios when I was growing up, yep. not realizing there was Honey Nut Checks because my grandma loved checks. Yeah. I didn't realize that those two things melted and Honey Nut Checks stays crunchy longer. Hey everyone, it's that time again where we learn a short song together that we can sing wherever you feel most comfortable. Today, we're going to learn a very short song. It's called Lady Come Down and See. It's an old English tune and it is the perfect round because as soon as you learn the melody, it's very, very easy to put together. Although it sounds a little chaotic at the end, you'll see. It's pretty fun though. So I'll sing this first phrase, or I'll sing the whole melody, and then we'll sing it together a couple times just to get used to it. So the words are, Lady, come down and see. The cat is in the plum tree. Who knows? I guess the cat was in the plum tree that day. So I'll sing it first, and then we'll sing it together. Lady, come down and see. The cat sits in the plum tree. That's simple. Let me sing it one more time, and then we'll sing it together. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Now you, join me and we'll sing it a couple times. Let's just repeat it so we feel more comfortable. One, two, three. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Simple enough. So now I'm going to record it on my loop station. You'll hear it. And we'll just have it repeat a little bit, and then I'll add in a second part. Now the second part will be halfway through the melody, and then after that I'll add in the third and fourth parts, and then it'll sound a little chaotic for fun. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. In the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits now I'll in add the, the plum second part. tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat It's a pretty fun game to play with four people if you have them and they're interested in singing together. But let's just review that one uh, melody one more time and then you can bring it to the dinner table and show it off to your friends and family. Ready? One, two, three. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. Lady, come down and see the cat sits in the plum tree. That's it, everybody. You just learned a second song on Boys Choir today. I don't know if you can see, but behind me are some uh, loop stations. Have you ever heard of these things? Um, I think I've heard of them once. Yeah, so they're instruments that people usually use for singer-songwriters or DJs and clubs. And what I'm excited about is that when I'm introducing songs that we're going to sing through the podcast, I'm teaching them a song by singing it by rote, you know, back and forth, that sort of thing. But okay. then in order to hear the final version, I'm recording and overdubbing myself. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of cool. I might bring our my loop stations into rehearsals occasionally, or at least in the rotation, so that you know some of you guys can get used to thinking outside the box about just singing a melody in a key. Yeah. Just kind of going from there, because realistically, like if we don't think about 
music on the page and we just think about the fact that we are musical as mm -hmm. humans, then a lot more people might be interested in doing it. I have to say my, my dad, I love my dad, yeah. but my dad automatically shuts down and assumes that he's not a, not a musician because oh, yeah. you know, I am and my brother is and other people are, but I keep thinking, you know, when we go to church and we, and I hear him sing, he may not sing in tune all the time, but he sure does feel it musically. Yeah which is really interesting to me. Once we get out of our shell, we feel more comfortable. That's so, exactly the same thing with my dad too. Yeah. He he's very, very musical, but. <laughs> well, everybody's got their thing. That's fine. But I'll bring these loopers in and we can, we can test them out in rehearsal. That'd be All fun. Right. Yeah. Well, Caden, it has been great to get to know you. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time, especially during this weird time. And it was the first week of school for you, right? Yes. Oh, man. Well, hopefully you don't have too much homework for the weekend. Yeah, not any, really. <laughs> Good. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's great to meet you. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Yeah, I can't wait. Thanks for listening and getting to know Caden Rothstein. The opening and closing credit music for this episode is Song of the Angels by Mark Searitt. The first track from the St. John's Boys Choir 2013 album, Larger Than Life. As mentioned, the lo-fi track you heard was arranged and adapted by me with original material from Super Sample, Ryle, Taro, and Raff and Graff. The performance of Fire by Katerina Gimmon was a live performance from the Vancouver Youth Choir in 2016 at St. John's Shahanesee Anglican Church in Vancouver, B.C. And the music we learned today can be found in the King Singer's Book of Rounds, Canons, and Part Songs through Hal Leonard. Please tune in for future episodes of Boys Choir Today at boyschoirtoday.buzzsprout.com. We look forward to singing with you soon. <laughs>